I reckon one of the most common things that people talk about or myths that people come asking me about is about the old noisy knee. Right? I think that coming in going, oh, I've got this noisy knee, therefore I must have something wrong. Do you, do you experience that? Yeah, yes. they're, they're, they're always concerned that, that noise equals damage. Yeah, and I, that's, that's the one thing I think we can reassure them. That isn't the case. Some people have noisy knees, no pain, and then other people can have no noise and quite a lot of pain. So the noise thing doesn't match up well with uh, whether someone's got a problem with their kneecap or not. I reckon the other thing that they often come in and talk to me about is uh, like whether I should do some exercise or whether I should run. And you know, obviously you're a podiatrist, I reckon a lot of people ask you whether you're gonna run as well. Right? Yeah, we get this a lot that, that obviously when a knee is sore, when any body part is sore, mm. sometimes running might make a sore thing a bit sore. So there's always a, a right time to do a bit less, but it sort of sometimes bleeds into is running bad for my knees? And I think the, the, the message there needs to be that, that most of the science now tells us quite the opposite. It's quite good for our joint health. Yeah, and I, re I refer to it as like a bell curve. You know, there's a middle bit, middle zone there that's absolutely perfect for people to do. Do loads, potentially, you're putting yourself in harm's way. Do nothing at all, you're, gonna, you're not gonna benefit um, from being inactive, really. So yeah, just because you've got some hurty knees doesn't mean you shouldn't be exercising. You've got to find and strike that balance. Yeah, so I reckon the next thing that people really commonly ask is that I've got this hurty knee, I'm going to need some surgery. And I'm thinking, oh, no, how am I going to be able to talk you out of this? And I think one of the big things for me is that when you've got kneecap pain in particular, surgery is not a fantastic option. I don't know whether you reckon. Yeah, I, I think it's complete human nature when something hurts, you, you go into your experience with that and often it's a family member, a friend that's had a problem maybe they ended up needing surgery. Yeah. And you tell yourself, this is the way I'm going, but actually it could be a completely different problem. And, and the golden rule really is just, you, you find out what you're dealing with, exhaust the conservative options, particularly for, for knee campaign, yeah. and then you know, reevaluate from there. So I'll tell you something my patients ask me a lot, and I'd love your take on it, because I find it sometimes difficult to answer, and that is, at what point when I have a painful knee, do I need an image, an X-ray or an MRI? Uh, yeah, and look, I get asked really very similar set of questions. And the thing with kneecap pain in particular, this is a clinical diagnosis predominantly, and doesn't need imaging in order to tell us categorically that that is what's going on with the knee. Where imaging really does have a role and can be very useful is to rule out other reasons why some people have their kneecap pain. So I think if, if you're faced with that kind of situation, and, and what I tend to say to people is, look, what you're saying to me, what I'm looking at and how I'm seeing you present, all points towards this diagnosis. I've got no concerns that it's anything else. Imaging's not gonna add anything to what we're gonna do, how we're gonna go on and treat this. If I've got some question marks, something's not quite adding up, I'm like, right, let's get some imaging, let's understand it, and let's bring it back to the table and put it together in understanding your problem and how we're gonna treat it. The first thing I'd say, and I hopefully offer some reassurance, is that it's an incredibly common problem, and we see a lot of it in clinic, and I think that's reassuring. Yeah, for sure. And I think the other thing is about how like, this, this aspect of hurt doesn't equal harm or equal damage. And I think if we can reassure people that because your knee's hurt doesn't mean that it's crumbling or it's failing underneath you. I think then we've also got some pretty decent tools in our toolbox to be able to manage this condition, exercise, being one of the best evidence to support the fact that we can get a lot of people better by structuring their exercise program appropriately. Yeah, and we, we alongside that, very much as a, as, a, as a joint effort, we know there's a small subset of people that will also do well with some sort of uh, intervention of foot level to complement the exercise as well, and a good assessment will sort of hopefully tease out who may be a good candidate for that or not. Yeah, and look, I, I talk about this every time I see someone in clinic, there's a, there's some who need to be uh, modified, adapted, improved from a hip down perspective and others from a foot up perspective. Uh, and that's what really tackles that knee complaint.